Hi everyone. Um, first of all, I just want to say I am completely bowled over by the response to my last video and all your lovely, lovely comments. The amount of people who have subscribed and uh, watched my videos uh, com has completely knocked me for six, to be honest. And um, I just wasn't expecting uh, that. So uh, thank you so much. And um, uh, my apologies if I haven't got round to reacting or responding to your comments. There's just been so many. And of course, it's been a difficult time. As some of you probably know from my post, my mother passed away last week. Uh, so it's, it's been very difficult, hence uh, my not having done a video for the last couple of weeks. And uh, also, thank you very, very much for all your messages of condolence on uh, that post. We're still in the middle of all the, all the uh, consequent admin that follows uh, a death um so it's, it's 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 very difficult but i really wanted to come on and do my christmas uh, book list before it gets much later and uh, to be honest it's a welcome distraction from all the admin stuff so thank you and um let's get on with it so tilly has come to say hello she's um been a lovely little friend and companion the last couple of weeks. So the books today are uh, mainly all set around midwinter, the winter solstice, Christmas and uh, there's a couple of children's books, a winter classic and a couple of, of um, two or three slightly more modern books. So let's start with this now uh, in a previous video i said that i i hadn't been able to find this um copy and uh, luckily i have, i found it i found it and it's my copy of little women look at this <laughs> yes you, i bet that tastes nice tilly this is the copy of little women that i had when i was a child it's very old as you can see it's undated which means it was published before 1930 and I think I've looked up the publishers and I think this edition is probably published in around 1920 so that's before even my mother was born so I think I probably must have uh, had this given to me by a grandmother um, possibly my mother's mother and of course it's a lovely book to read at Christmas um, the story of the four March sisters and their mother. It, it's a kind of coming of age uh, book really, isn't it? You know, we watch them all grow up. Um, and I, I love the beginning. I was just looking at the beginning just now. And um, let's just, just have a, a look at that. It starts out with um, a very Christmassy theme. Christmas won't be Christmas without any presents, grumbled Joe, lying on the rug. It's so dreadful to be poor, sighed Meg, looking down at her old dress. I don't think it's fair for some girls to have lots of pretty things and other girls nothing at all, added little Amy with an injured sniff. We've got father and mother and each other anyhow, said Beth contentedly from her corner. The four young faces on which the firelight shone brightened at the cheerful words, but darkened again, as Joe said sadly, we haven't got father and shall not have him for a long time. What I like about that opening is you get a very clear idea of each of the sisters character in their opening words. It's, it's really lovely. It's very, very clever. And it's, I think it's one of the, one of those books that has moments in it that can really make me cry. Obviously, I'm not. If you haven't read it, I'm not going to do any spoilers. But uh, you know, for those of you do, who do know it, there are some very sad bits. But one of the bits that makes me really cry is, is the joyful bit when Father comes home. Really, really lovely. I, that's a lovely family um, book to read at Christmas. 
<laughs> now, if you've seen my other videos, you'll probably know what's coming next when I talk about children's books and books that are a bit Christmassy. And this is the, my first video uh, on this channel around Christmas time. So I had to do it. I had to look at The Lion, the Witch and the Wardrobe by C.S. Lewis. Look at that. That's lovely. Lovely. I've always loved that beautiful cover uh, illustration. Isn't that gorgeous? This was my childhood copy again. My father bought this for me when I was about seven or eight. It immediately became my best ever book. <laughs> and uh, I still read all the Narnia books occasionally from time to time. I must have read them countless times. I have no idea how many times I've read them, but it's a lot. And yes, it's a children's book, but it's lovely to read as an adult if you've never read them. So I do recommend them. Um, if you want to read them actually chronologically in terms of the the, the chronological um, chron chronicles of Narnia, then you should probably start with The Magician's Nephew. This one was the first one he wrote. And of course, it's the story of the four children, brothers and sisters, who who tra go through a magic wardrobe and find themselves in the land of Narnia, where the white witch, the wicked witch, has, has kind of cursed the land so that it's it's always winter and never Christmas. And it's been like that for a hundred years. And of course, the four children uh, come to fulfil a prophecy that will bring that curse to an end. And it's uh, it's just an absolutely gorgeous story has its sad bits as well but it's it's really lovely and uh i think as children's classics go for me that is one of the best let's look at another christmas classic there must be very very few, few people who do not know this story and it's a christmas carol by charles dickens now, uh, this book, um, of course, A Christmas Carol was one of Dickens' short stories. And this uh, book, which uh, my best friend bought for me a few years ago, actually, um, contains four of... Bye, bye, Tim. You going? There we go. It contains four of Dickens' other Christmas stories, um, which he would... After the success of A Christmas Carol, he, he continued to um, create stories for Christmas. The Chimes, The Cricket on the Hearth, The Battle of Life and The Haunted Man. And it also contains the original illustrations. So there's um, Scrooge being visited by Marley's ghost. Do I need to say much about the story? I'm sure you, you must not. I mean, there's been countless films. And by the way, talking of the films... I have two favourite, and uh, so I recommend these two if you've never seen them. The first one is a 1951 film with uh, the wonderful Alastair Sim. And I absolutely adore Alastair Sim in this. He is so lovely. I mean, he's so horrible at Scrooge and then so lovely when he changes. And it when he uh, finally, you know, that last towards the last bit when he suddenly realises it's still Christmas and he kind of goes a, a little crazy. It just makes you weep with joy. It's an absolutely glorious film. So if you've never seen the Alastair Sim uh, Christmas Carol, do watch it if, if you can find a copy. It's absolutely lovely. My other favourite is A Muppet Christmas Carol. It, I, I, it's, it's just extraordinary that it could be so... Uh, brilliant and so moving and yet be done with the Muppets and uh, Michael Caine in that is just brilliant because he plays it straight with all the Muppets and uh, it's just brilliantly done. Um, if you've seen the films and not read the book, read the book, read the book as well. Uh, of course it's classed as a short story but in our, in, in our world we probably, in our time, we probably call it a novella really because it's, it's, it's quite long for what we might call a short story today. Um, so do read the book as well. I always say if you love a film of anything, always read the book as well because 
although I love films, but there is always so much more in a book uh, that you can't quite recreate in a film. So um, yeah, do that. So a um, couple of um, more sort of, <laughs> I, well, for me, they're, they're fairly um, modern, but uh, I suppose for many people, they feel like old books. This was published in 2004 and it's Light on Snow by Anita. Now we've got, I've got quite a few Anita Shreve novels in my bookshelf. And when my mother lived with me, we, went through a spate of reading these. My mother really liked Anita Shreve and she is a, a, a good writer. If you've not come across this, um, it's set in New England, I think, around midwinter. Um, it's about uh, a 12 year old uh, girl who lives with her widowed father and her father has not been able to come to terms with his wife's death and he's not been able to kind of express his grief and it's holding it all inside and one day they're walking uh through um a forest near their home and they find a newborn baby that has been left in the snow and of course they take it home they have to report it and um it's turns out to be um the daughter of a, a, a a teenager um, whose boyfriend actually left the baby out in the, in the snow uh, and it, it's, it, it's rather sad but the, uh, the baby survives I'm glad to say. The whole, the, the book is about, it, there's a lot about grief. Um, funny I should pick this out, I'd actually picked it out before my mother's death but uh, that's it's funny the way things go like that but it's very much about the what happens in the book is that the 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 mother of the um abandoned child comes to see them and of course because the the child has been abandoned they they really have to report it to the police but before they can do so they get snowed in so the three of them are all together and snowed in in their home and they kind of almost form like a little family. And it the, the book very much uh, deals with um, the consequences of unexpressed grief um, and, and the idea of family and what family is. And it's kind of coming of age of this uh, young girl as well. Now, I have to say, I did enjoy it. It's not my favourite Anita Shreve. I'm, I've looked up uh, some reviews of it too, and I think a lot of people find the ending is not entirely satisfying, but it is a lovely book to read around midwinter. If you like to read books uh, set in a wintry scene in winter, as I do, and I know a lot of you have commented too that you do too. Um, so yeah, so if you like Anita Shreve, that's a really good one to read in winter. Um, she's a very thoughtful writer and it's just one of those books that just explores human emotion. So that's that one. So fairly modern book um, that is a really good read for the Christmas period, um, published in 2009, is the Winter Ghosts by Kate Moss. Now I know Kate Moss's work. I I really love her books. Now this for Kate Moss, this is quite a short read. Uh, if you know Kate Moss, she usually um, does really really long epic historical novels uh, set in medieval France. Um, I've read one quite recently actually, and they they are very interesting and. Um, really good read. So this is uh, a little bit different. It's not, it's called The Winter Ghosts. It's not a spooky ghost story, uh, but it, it's kind of haunting and um, evocative of uh, a particular time. It's about um, a man who, it's five years on from the First World War and uh, 
the main character is still grieving for the loss of his brother in that war. He's really doing a lot about grief, don't I? He's, he goes on a trip, he drives through uh, France and gets caught in a snowstorm and his car goes off the road and he gets lost and he, then he finds himself in this village. He, he finds a boarding house and he meets this beautiful woman called Fabrisa and they just talk and talk about loss. She seems to know a lot about loss and, and war. And the next morning she has completely disappeared and nobody in the village knows of her. And it kind of turns out that the village has a, a very uh, sad history from the 14th century when the Cathars had completely wiped out uh, the village. So it's got that very sort of atmospheric haunting quality. Again, I have to say it's not my favourite Kate Moss. Loved the title. I actually think, I believe, I actually bought this for my mother, uh, probably at Christmas. It's very much a midwinter book. It's very much, um, if you're interested in uh, history, in French history, French medieval history in particular, and, you know, I would say if you are interested in French medieval history, then, you know, pick up other Kate Moss books because she is really good at medieval French history. So, yeah, uh, it's, uh, it's a nice one to read at Christmas. As I say, not my favourite Kate Moss, but you might like it for your Christmas read. And my last choice uh, for this uh, Christmas list is Winter Solstice by my namesake Rosamond. I've always been fascinated by Rosamond Pilcher's books because she spells her name Rosamond exactly the same way I do with the E on the end. Uh, but she's a lovely writer too. Uh, again, my mother and I both uh, read her books very much at the same time. She has a lovely... Her books I find very satisfying and they're, they're full of warmth and love. So they they really are a, a lovely read. And, and uh, I love the opening of this because um, the main character, Elfrida, um, has just uh, got a dog from Battersea Dog's home. I just, <laughs> so, she, you know, Rosamond Pilcher is a, is a woman after my own heart. And I also like the fact that a lot of her characters are older uh, people um and that's always nice because so many books tend to be about young people she leaves home she has a, a tiny cottage but a, a, a tragedy happens and she goes to scotland to live in this um rambling old house which has also become a place for people to come to and she is joined by, I think, four more people. And they have all got their various stories and tragedies. And it's about how they all come together, share their stories and their lives get changed. And as I say, she, her books have a real warmth uh, at their heart uh, they're full of joy and they have uh, i find they they have a really satisfying ending so this is a really lovely one to read around the christmas winter solstice period and by the way the winter solstice i know that many of you do not live in a an area i've had quite a few comments from people who don't live in a place where they really have a winter season so my apologies for talking about that uh, for those of you uh, and I but I know that some of you really like to read books about winter even though you don't actually experience winter in the northern hemisphere 
midwinter or the winter solstice is the point between it's a halfway point between the autumn equinox and the spring equinox and it is the official end of autumn and beginning of winter even though we call it midwinter there's there's lots of different interpretations and it depends whether you use the meteorological or the astrological um sort of system as it were but basically um if you if you split the year into two halves uh, we have you know spring and summer being summer and autumn and winter being winter that's why the winter solstice although we call it midwinter is actually the official end of autumn that's the way i always see it anyway so the winter solstice i love the winter solstice because uh, although I love Christmas too, um, I like to celebrate the winter solstice, you know, a bit of a pagan in me really, um, and I like to celebrate what we did before uh, Christianity when we celebrated the return of the sun and days that begin to lengthen after that day. So that's just my little, little comment on... <laughs> on winter, the winter solstice, Christmas, etc. Um, gosh, I don't know. I've got a book review coming up. I don't know how soon I'll be able to do that. You know, got so much to do and I'm still in the grieving process, but I really, really wanted to get this done um, before we got much closer to Christmas. If I find any more Christmassy books, I might do another one if I have time, but I do have a... Um, historical novel to review very soon as well so I will get to that as soon as I can and uh, you know hopefully uh, normal service will be resumed as soon as possible so many many thanks again and many thanks for watching this video hope you like it and I'll see you again soon bye for now